Turkish Airlines Euroleague'de artık yeni sezon başlamak üzere ve biz de Anadolu Efes'in medya günündeyiz. Anadolu Efes'in yıldızlarıyla bir aradayız ve e, röportajlarımız bugün Shane Larkin'le başlıyor. Geçen sezon muazzam bir e, performans ortaya koymuştu ve bu yaz takımda kalıp kalmayacağı merak konusuydu. Ve sonunda e, belki de opsiyonunun e, bitmesine kısa bir süre kala takımda kalacağını duyurdu ve e, Anadolu Efes'te olan macerası devam etti ve bugün Shane Larkin'le beraberiz. Shane, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm okay. Uh, so how was, how was your summer? How was uh, it was really good. Uh, very relaxing. Um, you know, kind of stressful because I didn't know where I was going to be, but it all ended up well when I, I came back here. So it was a good summer for me. So let's talk about that because uh, not just you, everybody was ex expecting your uh, decision, what's going to be, you're going to stay or you're going to go to a bay, what's going to be. So uh, can you explain those days to me? How was it, your decision-making process? Um, you know, I really wanted to make the right decision, so I really took my time in uh, choosing where I really wanted to be. Um, and I had a lot of talks with my family, a lot of talks with my agents about what the best thing for my career was going to be. Um, and I had a, a couple of NBA offers, um, but at the end of the day, I felt like being here in Ephesus and uh, playing another year for this team uh, would help me continue to grow and, and become the player that I want to be. So uh, at the end of the day, I felt like this is the best place for me, and that's why I decided to come back. Uh, you know, I really surprised that you uh, didn't get the offer that you want from the NBA because it was a, a magical season and one of the best seasons of you, of course. Yeah. Uh, so, what's like uh, the offers that you get from the NBA? How, how was them? Um, there were some offers um, for, you know, not as much playing time, and then there was offers for some playing time that. Um, Just the situation with the team wasn't wasn't correct. Um, so there were definitely places that I looked that uh, I could have gone and I could have been happy there, but I just felt like being here in Ephesus um, was the best decision. You know, I, I've played six years as a professional now, and every single season for the last six years I've played in a new place. So um, after the special year we had here last year, I felt like coming back here and and growing and playing a second year with this team, same coach, same gym, same teammates, I felt like that would help me take another step in my career when I felt like last year I took a, a step. So um, at the end of the day, I had some good offers, but nothing that would have made me more happy than being here in Ephesus, and, and that's why I came back. And you like uh, you have like uh, one week to uh, make your decision in uh, when you when we look at your contract, but you didn't wait until the option comes. Yeah. And you called uh, Alper Yumas, yeah. I guess. And uh, can you tell me that moment that yes, this is gonna be a, I'm gonna call him Alper right now. Um, you know, I was sitting there um, at my house in Miami, and I was just thinking like. I'm sitting here waiting for the right NBA offer to come back, but I know how badly FS wants me to come back. I know how badly the fans want me to come back. I know how much fun I had there, how much uh, excitement will be around the team this year. And um, I was kind of just sitting there, I think, 10 days before the end of that, that, that period, and I was just like, man, I don't even want to wait anymore. I don't want to have this uncertainty about where I'm going to be. So I just was like, let's do it. I, I want to go back to FS and... I made the call. He was very excited. Uh, I was excited, and uh, now we're here. So yeah, he tweeted in the uh, night. Yeah. Uh, I told him. <laughs> I told him not to tweet. I said, "Yo, <laughs> let me like tell everybody." But yeah. he was like, "No, no, no. It's very important to let me announce it." So. So you got understand him because it. he was too yeah. excited yeah, because yeah, yeah. He, you were the main center of the team at the end yeah. of the season. So not just him, the all the fans were waiting for your decision, yeah. uh, and you get in the uh, tweets and the mentions in the uh, social media, right? Because yeah. everybody uh, tweeted to you. I saw some of them. So did you get excited by the uh, fans uh, waiting for you like that? Yeah. Um, ever since the season ended last year, everybody would write me almost every day. Come back, come back, come back. We yeah. want you back. Um, so just the amount of love that I received um, in that a period of time really just made me even more excited to come back. You know, last year, in the beginning of the year, it was kind of up and down. Um, so at the end of the year, to finish the way that we did as a team, to finish as a champion, um, you know, it was just a very exciting time to be able to come back and, and play here again. And I'm, I'm sure this year will be just as exciting. And uh, hopefully we can... 
accomplish similar goals and accomplish a goal that we were a little short on last year. Yeah, let's talk about last season a little bit more because it was a great season for the uh, history of FS for all of you guys. Uh, and you said there was up and downs in the beginning of the season, but you guys managed to bring yourself together in the end of the season. How did you manage to uh, build the chemistry just like in a six months period? Um, I think we just have a bunch of unselfish guys on the team. There was nobody that on every single night went out there and focused on themselves. Every single night it was whoever got hot, whoever was playing well, whoever was um, going to help us win, we wanted them to be on the court and we all kind of supported each other. And I think when you have a team like that, when you have a group like that, it's that group can come together very easily. And then once you come together and you all believe in the same thing, you're all chasing one goal, it just makes it easier to go out there and play play your game because everybody respects you, everybody respects winning and that's what we were trying to do so I think um, just having a bunch of unselfish guys that didn't care about their own statistics that just cared about winning I think that's what really helped us gel that early and that quickly and you know it's very hard because uh, you know was a message begin the season very good you were not that uh, in the mood in the beginning of the season but when you get hot when you played like Shane Narkin he step aside maybe and you can you played with together Like maybe the one of the best duos in the history yeah. of the Euroleague. So we talked about it it's, uh, in the last season. But when you look at it from the now, uh, away from the stress, away from the season, how was your relationship on the court, especially with Vasa? Uh, our relationship was always good on the court, even in the beginning of the season. Mm -hmm. uh, he understands me, and I understand him. I understand what he likes to do on the court. I understand what his strengths are, what his weaknesses are, and he understands what my strengths are, and what my weaknesses are. And we have an open communication, so uh, whenever you have that, it makes it easy to go out there and play. And obviously, he's a great player. He can do a lot of the things that I can do. Um, so uh, it just made it very easy to go out there and, and learn each other and play together. And, you know, early in the year, it was obviously up and down a little bit here and there, trying to figure out how to make it work. But then once we made it work, once we figured it out, it was one of the best one of the best backcourts in Europe. So, um I'm excited for this season. I think, you know, based on the chemistry we built last year, we can continue to grow. And, um, I mean, I think we have another great chance to, to be champions, another great chance to continue to get better and better. And uh, we'll see what happens. And one thing that we need to underline, that you is you were not as selfish at all because you need to get hot, you need to get in the rhythm, but you never pushed it. Yeah. Uh, when you you find your rhythm also, you share the ball, You when you, you read the defenses, uh, you find the hot man in the court. Uh, your approach, let's talk about that, because you, as I mentioned, you never pushed it, yeah. you let the other guys to involve also when you are in a good mood. So how was your uh, approach to the team when you were very in a good rhythm? Um, I just go out there and try to make the easy basketball plays. Um, and obviously when I feel like when I get hot, I, I see the rim and it's like it's like this big. Yeah. So I know that when I start making a lot of shots, the defense is going to focus on me. And that's when my teammates get open. So it makes it easier for them. So I always just try to make the right basketball play. I'm not out there to score a bunch of points. I'm not out there to get a bunch of assists. I kind of just go based on how the game goes. And If I take two shots that night, but I had five assists and we won by 20 points, that's fine with me. I'm not a selfish guy. I don't think about my own statistics. So uh, whatever we can do, whatever I can do to win games is what I try to do, whether that's scoring, passing, rebounding, steals, defending, whatever. So that's kind of my approach every single game. Yeah. Uh, what do you think was the breaking point of the last season? Where do you think, that's, yes, that's the click I want to hear in the team. Uh, there's any part of the uh, team when you last season that you feel that, yes, this is the breaking point? Um, well, obviously this is going to sound like it's my breaking point, mm -hmm. but I feel like the game against Barcelona here yeah. at home, um, we were both tied in the standings at that point. Um, they were fourth, we were, no, we were fourth and they were fifth, but we had the same amount yeah. of wins and losses. Mm -hmm. And we knew that if we won that game by 15 points or more, yeah. that we would basically win like two games. Yeah. So um, obviously I had a good game that night, but I think that that game, that night, uh, we really started believing in our team. Uh, we felt like we had a, a solid grip on fourth place and we were going to have home court advantage in the playoffs. And uh, I think that's when we really started to push. And um, we really started to gel really well at that time. And 
obviously everybody started playing better. Every start, everybody started gelling more together, and um, that's when things got really fun. And um, we started having a lot of fun with each other on the court, off the court, and um, I think that game that night, um, just the the energy that was in the building, the energy that was in the locker room after the game, the energy that was on the bench, just everybody kind of just started really believing in what we were doing, and um, I think that's what really helped us and propelled us to have the great rest of the season. And what about that crossover right there, I guess, against yeah. Pierre Oriola? Um, it was fantastic, man. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> just, just one of those games, one of those games where everything just feels right. Every time you shoot, every time you make a move, every time you make a pass, everything just feels like it's going to be good. And um, it was just one of those days I just woke up and I just, I just felt good. And um, obviously that showed on the court and hopefully we can have some more moments like that this season. And you felt the excitement on the stands yeah. when you do that and you score your points. And yeah. uh, it was a, one of the historical days of the Serena Adam Hall right here. So you feel, feel the energy right here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, You know, I probably watched that game now five, six times, yeah. and you know, I probably watched that play a hundred times. <laughs> and it's not because I go search for it, but people always send it yeah. to me. People, me too, because we are watching that yeah. so again people, and again. Yeah, people send it to me on Twitter, on Instagram, wherever. So I've seen that play, and I've seen my my favorite thing about watching my plays is watching the fans' reaction. Yeah. And I remember I made the cross over down there. And then a kid on that baseline down there stood up and went crazy. Yeah. And then I did a hesitation. I made the layup down here on the on the first crossover play. Yeah. And then there were people sitting behind this stand right here. And after I made the layup, I saw people going like yeah. this. And I was like, wow, that's that's really cool to think, to see people appreciating that what I'm doing out on the court. You know, I work very hard to be this kind of player. And just to see the way people are reacting to my game, reacting to our team reacting to FS when you know last year we we finished last or two yeah. years ago we finished yeah. last you know just to see all of that really it made me very happy and uh, it's one of the reasons I came back for sure so it's always a very cool moment to watch those things and they were your opponents in the playoffs also yeah. uh, and it was a very good series and it's uh, decided by the last game so uh, what about the playoffs against Barcelona what do you think is the like that Playoffs breaking point. It was the away game that you win with a big, big margin, or the last game that you come here and with, with big confidence. What was that? Um, I mean, I think that series was just was a good series. You know, they were a good team. We were a good team. Yeah. We were fighting. You know, they took game. I think uh, game four they took it at home for sure. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, it was a it was a big big pressure coming back here and you know wanting to win in front of our fans, but. I think the breaking point in that was when Adrian hit that three. Yeah. I think until that moment, it was just like whoever wins this series is going to deserve it because they played hard, we played hard, they executed, we executed, they had a good game, we had a good game. So I think it was a very evenly matched series. And, um, you know, I think just when Vasa drove middle here and kicked it out to Adrian and he hit that three, I think you could hear the crowd, you can hear... Everybody, you can hear our bench, you can hear coaches. Like you could just hear the energy when he made that shot, because he was like, "We did it," you know. So I think that was a breakthrough moment, yeah. which was what 45, 46 seconds left in the game. So I think that was the moment. I don't think there was a, a breakthrough moment until then. Yeah, and then the final four came from like, like almost two decades later, and you were there in Victoria. How was it feel to be back in the Final Four in Victoria that you played there uh, before? How was the uh, Final Four atmosphere as a player? Um, I mean, it was very special for me. And uh, playing against Fenerbahce, your rivals? It, it, it was all very, very special. To go back to Victoria, um, the place where I started my European career, yeah. uh, to go there with Ephes, which hadn't been there in 20 years, to be playing against Finner, which is another, our rival yeah. in everything. So, you know, it was a very special moment, and, you know, we were very excited for the game, very, very focused. Um, and we knew that Finner was a great team, and we knew that we were a great team. So we knew at the end of the day, if we went out there and we played as hard as we could, and whatever happened, happened. And uh, I think, you know, obviously some of us had good games, some of us didn't, but I think the big thing was... We just went out there and played hard, and we, we left all of our energy on the court, and I think that's what really gave us the game. Um, you know, it was a, it was a great, great semifinal. Um, 
something that I'll, I'll always remember. But um, it was very, very special. And uh, Fenerbahce is the, one of the best defenses in the Europe. Uh, they like to switch a lot, but I remember that, that, that you were very motivated, very focused on the switching defense yeah. uh, against Vesely and Melli. Uh, so, uh, can you do you remember the uh, point of view in that game because you were very focused and you played against the switch defenses very great. So, uh, how do you remember that game, especially in the? Uh, In against a very good defense of Fenerbahce? Um, I think it started at practice. Mm -hmm. You know, we knew we were going to play Fenner, um, and we've played them multiple times yeah. during the season. So when we had a, a, a long period of time to prepare to play against them, we were practicing against switches every day in practice. Mm -hmm. And um, all week in those practices, I was going against Brian Dunstan, who was a great defender, and yeah. I was going against Adrian Mormon, who was a great defender. Um, so, you know, practicing against those guys every single day in practice, working on my moves, working on my hesitations, my shots, drives, passes, all that is what prepared me for that moment. And obviously, Vesely is a great defender. Melly is a great player. Um, so to be able to go there and execute the way that I did was just because we practiced it so much. And, uh, you know, all the things that happen in the bright lights of the games always start at practice. So the fact that we practice and practice and practice and just knew exactly what our game plan was against the switching defense. I think that's what really helped me play well in that game and, and helped us get to the final. And before the final, when we were talking with you in the training sessions, uh, you said, yeah, we're going to win it. I feel it. We're going to win it. You said uh, to our microphones like that. Uh, can you talk, talk about that confidence? Because it was a final game. FS never played that final before. You guys never played that final. But you got the confidence. You believe in yourselves. Yeah. Uh, But can you tell me that feeling before the final? Um, you know, we were a very resilient group. Um, people didn't really expect us to be there. Yeah. So if we didn't believe in ourselves, who was going to believe in us? So I think that's kind of the mindset we had. And going into those games, we were just in the locker room saying, again, even against Finner and against Seska in the final, we were like, there's probably 25 of us in this locker room right now. And only 25 of us think we're going to win this game. And um, I think we really took that attitude out onto the court and we just wanted to prove everybody like we're, we are for real. Like we're really a team that you got to respect. We're really a team that can do this. And I think with that mindset, with that attitude is what helped us go out there and just fight like it was our last game. Fight like, you know, you're going to miss some shots. You're going to make some shots. But if as long as you fight and you make everybody work for everything they get, um, we have a chance. And uh, I think that's what we really did. And obviously... We didn't pull out the final, and I was uh, disappointing. But when we went back in the locker room, I was just very proud of how we all fought. Um, some of us had great games. Some of us had bad games. But at the end of the day, every single person that stepped on that court fought with everything they had. And that's all you can ask for because basketball is one game in one day. So um, obviously it didn't end up the way we wanted it to. But now we just got to think back on that moment, uh, regroup, and um, use that as motivation to get back there and this year just win just one more game that's all you have to do win one more game and you guys keep your core together this yeah. year uh, it's a, I think the continuity is very very important especially in EuroLeague uh, so how are you feeling about this season? I feel good about it you know we have the same same guys same coach same system same everything um, you know we met we lost two or three guys but we brought in great players we added some great players and um Now the expectation is there, so it's going to be more difficult this season because last year we kind of started at the bottom and came out of nowhere, mm -hmm. and everybody was like, oh, what is what is this? Ephesus is good again? Like, what is this? Um, but this year everybody knows that we have the same group, same core, same coach, so everybody knows that last year we, we finished second, so everybody's going to be gunning for us. Everybody's going to try to make statements against us, and we have to have that mindset knowing that now we have a target on our backs, Everybody's going to be coming for us, but we just got to keep fighting and just keep proving ourselves because at the end of the day, we're not the champion. So coming in second is great and all, but... It will be a whole different approach, yeah. right? Yeah, there's coming in second isn't what you come here for. You mm -hmm. come here to win. So um, it's going to be a great year. Uh, we're all very focused. We're all very motivated. We're all very hungry. Uh, and... Um, I think we'll have another special year for sure. And you guys, you got new guys now, Alec Peters from Seska that you played the final against, and yep. Chris Singleton from Barcelona. Maybe he didn't have the uh, season that 
uh, he wanted to, but we know his quality. Right. So, um, how how is it in the uh, training sessions with them, uh, and what will them add to your team? Um, well, Alec is a knockdown shooter, yeah. uh, very quick release, um, and he really spaces the floor. So, when you have a guy like that, when you have to pay so much attention to him, you can't leave him because he's going to knock down a shot. It opens up the floor for guys like me, Roddy, Vasa, Kruno, James. It, it opens up the floor for us to be able to penetrate and get into the paint. And if his guy helps, you know you can throw it to him, and 85% of the time he's going to make an open shot. So... Um, that definitely adds a, a, an element to our team. And then having Chris here, he's a, a tall, athletic, long four who just can do everything. You know, he can defend, he can rebound, he can block shots, he can shoot, uh, he can score in the post, he can score dribble drive, he can pass. So, you know, when you add guys like that um, to the team we already had last year, um, it really gives us a, a new look. Um, again, we're going to be able to play small more, um, have Chris play the five some. Yeah. And just really go five out. And yeah. if you go five out and there's no big guys in the paint because you, you got go right <laughs> it really helps. So um, me, Vasa, like I said, everybody. So um, I think adding those two guys really helped us a lot. Uh, gave us a new element, gave us something that um, we didn't have as much last year. And I think it just makes us more difficult to guard and makes us better defensively as well. Because Chris is a great defender. Alec is really strong. He's tough. And he, he plays really hard on defense. So... I think we added great pieces and we kept our core together. So there's no reason why we can't go out there and have another special year and, and continue to grow on the momentum that we had at the end of last season. In the preseason games, I noticed something that uh, you guys begin to uh, switch a lot yeah. in some positions. Maybe you choose that positions. But uh, and as you mentioned, when Chris Singleton joined you, uh, let you guys now switching uh, more often than maybe last season. Is yeah. it something that Coach act edits in the preseason? Pre um, yeah. We're going to do it in the uh, ongoing. Yeah, break. definitely. You know, adding adding guys that can switch out and, and play that kind of defense, it, it makes it tougher, especially in Europe, mm -hmm. where the pain is much smaller because there's no three-second rule. Um, so being able to switch and, and keep guys on the perimeter is definitely something that we've been working on. And um, it adds a new element to our team defensively as well. So it's definitely something that we're going to try to throw in there this year and, and try to get better at. And, um, you know, having multiple looks on defense, being able to throw a switching defense or a trapping defense or a regular defense, whatever, it definitely makes you more uh, difficult to play against. So coach is definitely giving us different looks in preseason, and we'll just continue to work on it, continue to get better, and hopefully we can use that during the season and help us have a, a much better defense. And this is the one of the uh, best seasons of the Euroleague because the, uh, more teams in the regular season, more games, more double weeks, and now uh, the teams got uh, in a higher uh, level right now. Uh, the Barcelona that you guys eliminated uh, brings Nikola Mirotic, Alex Arbenes, like uh, Laney, uh, Corey Higgins. They they are huge power right now. Real Madrid got the uh, World Cups best players right now. So, uh, what do you think about your rivals in the Euroleague right now? Um, you know, I think everybody went out this summer and tried to get better. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's going to be difficult. It's always going to be difficult. Um, and you know those those teams that you named and a few other teams as well really bolstered their rosters and, and went out and added really key guys but at the end of the day anybody can look good on paper mm -hmm. um if you look at it now barcelona looks like an nba team almost yeah. so you know they they look like they're the favorites but on the paper right yeah <laughs> it's like it's basketball hasn't even started yet and on paper you can look amazing you can look good but when you get on the court you have to earn it you have to fight you have to win you have to go out there and make everybody respect you so um, at the end of the day I mean we have the same team we finished second last year and the team that beat us lost a lot of pieces so I think we're one of the favorites I think we're a very confident group I think we have everything we need to get back there so uh, I don't really care much what anybody else added I don't really care much what anybody else did to get better I respect what they did and I wish well on them and I hope they have great seasons but I'm really just focused on what we have going on and I think that every single night we step on the court that that people are going to have to make us respect them and we're going to respect them equally but I feel like we should be the favorite because 
we, we finished second last year and, and we've proven that we have a great roster and we've proven that together we're a very tough team to beat. So we'll see how it goes this year, but I'm very confident with our team. Yeah. So let's talk about the uh, World Cup. Did you able to watch the games in the World Cup? Yeah, uh, we, I think we were in Sardinia for the most part, in uh -huh. Italy, um, during training camp, but I was able to watch a lot of the, a lot of the games. Also, what are you told us about USA? They, they uh, of course, lots of stars didn't came to the team, yeah. but in the end, it was the United States team. So, what do you think about the results? Um, you know, I'm sure those guys are, are disappointed in the in their result. Um, but they took they took a lot of young guys um, that hadn't played on an international level. Yeah. Um, so it was difficult. You know, they had a lot of younger dudes on their team. I know a couple of them personally. I played with a few of them. Um, and it's a much different game, so it, it takes more time to, to adjust. And, you know, in years past, they've had LeBron, KD, Carmelo, Dwayne Wade, Kobe, Chris Paul, these guys that have played in the Olympics and played in World Cups and played in, and kind of understand the European game and understand FIBA rules and stuff like that. So um, with a lot of those guys withdrawing this year and having to kind of put together a roster that they thought would have been better. Um, I think it was difficult for those guys, but at the end of the day, it's it's not as disappointing when you when you look at it because basketball is basketball, and any given day, anybody can beat anybody. And uh, although USA had a great team, a bunch of great players, a great coach, great organization, um, a lot of other countries do as well. And I think that really showed this year and Uh, you know, Spain eventually won it, but, you know, Argentina had a great run. Australia had a great run. Um, so these teams that not many people expected uh, to be as good as they were were better than they thought. And um, I think you can just take this World Cup specifically and see that basketball is growing in every single country. And basketball is, you know, everybody looks at the USA and says, it's the best talent, the best basketball, the best everything with basketball. But... As you can see, there's a lot of other countries that are growing, a lot of other countries that are getting much better, and the the gap between the USA and the rest of the world is is, is closing yeah. because basketball is becoming more popular. So um, it was very exciting to watch, but um, I think that, you know, I think everybody in the world sees now that basketball is global and more countries are now coming to win and, and getting better every single year. And when you're watching a uh, World Cup, did you ever feel that, yeah, I wish I could be part of that World Cup as a player. Uh, definitely, definitely. Um, you know, it's a very exciting tournament. And, um, you know, that level of excitement, having like a, a nation behind you, like a country behind you, just like fighting for you, pushing you, cheering for you. I think that's, that's amazing. And for all those guys who are being able to play in those kind of environments, I'm, I'm sure it's very exciting. So uh, we've been hearing stuff about the uh, Croatian national team wants you to play with, for them. Uh, is there anything that came from them or uh, it's just rumors or how you feel? How was your look into playing in a national team like that? Um, I mean, I didn't talk to anybody from any Croatian basketball federation or anything like that. It was more just a reporter. Uh -huh. A reporter came to me and he asked me. Um, he said the Croatian team has a lot of great players, but the one position they really need help at is point guard. And then he asked me how I would feel about <laughs> being that point guard. And my answer was, you know, I think, you know, that's, a, that's an option if that is there. And that would be very exciting to be able to play for a country and have, like I just said, everybody from that country supporting you. And I think that would be cool. Uh, is there an official offer there? No. Um, is it something that I've thought long and hard about? No. It's just kind of just something that Kruno mentioned to me. Yeah. He said, Trying to convince you? Yeah, he was just <laughs> like, hey, we have a great team. We have this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. You know, if we had a point guard, you know, we really make it to the Olympics. Do you want to play in the Olympics? And that's what Kruno was kind of saying to me. <laughs> and then the next day is when the reporters came and asked me. So I don't know what happened there. Yeah. but um, Maybe Kruno told yeah, him to ask. <laughs> maybe that's what happened, but that's kind of how it came about. And, um, you know, I'm open to the idea. I don't have any... Um, offers anywhere else I don't have any offer from this country that country wherever so I'm open to the idea because I think playing in the L Olympics is, is something that I've always dreamed about obviously it's probably not going to be for the USA mm -hmm. so be able to do that for a country be able to go there and compete and um, represent a country I think that would be cool very cool very very interesting and something that I'd like to do so 
Um, wherever that comes from, how that happens, is something that I've been looking at, and we'll see what happens. And I see your photos that you shared with our national team jersey. Yeah. It looked very good on you. It did. So how <laughs> did you feel in it? And maybe how you feel it when there is a, if there is an offer came from the Turkish national team? Um, I mean, if that offer comes, it, it will be a great offer. Um, you know, I've played here for a year now. Uh, I think I, I have a lot of respect for the fans here. Um, and it will be amazing. You know, I think... Um, You know, being here and playing in Turkey and, and winning the championship here last year, I kind of started to feel like this is more like of a home, kind of. You know, this is my, like I said, the only place where I played two seasons in my entire career. Yeah. So that tells you how much I really respected here. I really liked being here. I loved the fans. I loved the place. So being able to to play for the to country here would be cool. It would be a great opportunity. It would be a, an amazing experience. And um, obviously there is no official offer there. But it's definitely something that I'd be interested in and something that I'll have a conversation about. And um, like I said, we'll see what happens. There, There's a lot of time to discuss it, um, but we'll see what happens. And um, I think that jersey looked pretty good on me too, so we'll see. You feel good, good, in, good in it, right? Yeah, yeah. I hope the offer came because we got qualifiers for the Olympics yeah. in the uh, summer. So we're going to see what's good, what will happen. Yeah. Uh, in the last part, uh, I want to talk about uh, uh, being you... You are now a role model for all the Turkish fans, Turkish kids, and all of the kids in Europe. And uh, you deal with this something very, very important, OCD. Um, can we talk about it? Because, uh, as I mentioned, you're a role model, you, everybody watching you, and you are uh, dealing with it off the court also. How, how, how do you handle it uh, in the court and off the court, and how you handle it during your life with this OCD situation? Um... Well, when I was younger, it, it was difficult because I didn't really understand what I was going through. I didn't really understand why I had to do some of the things that I was doing because my friends didn't do it, my mom didn't do it, my dad didn't do it, my sisters didn't do it. So I kind of just didn't really understand what I was going through or why I had to, like, wash my hands so many times. And um, as I got older, you know, I got therapy. Um, probably around 12, 13 years old, I got therapy, and they kind of told me, Uh, what was going on with me and then ever since then you know I just every single day I've tried to fight it I've tried to be stronger than the OCD because I know it's just something in my mind that I need to be stronger than and I kind of have always related that to other things in my life and I felt like you know to be where I am basketball wise there was a lot of people or a lot of things that I had to get over um, not the tallest guy I'm not the most athletic guy I'm not the strongest guy But I really wanted to be a basketball player. I really wanted to play at the highest level. So my drive, my motivation, my determination to get here is what really helped me break through those walls, break through those barriers to get to where I got to. And um, I just kind of used the same approach with OCD. You know, there were days when I was younger where I would just be sitting there washing my hands a whole bunch of times that I probably shouldn't. And then as I got older and I, I got more more mentally strong and I started understanding more of myself I was just like I started challenging the OCD I started saying I'm not gonna wash my hands this amount of times I'm just gonna fight it I'm gonna fight it and then eventually as I was mentally strong as I was mentally tough I started breaking through walls breaking through walls breaking through walls and I started doing less of my OCD and I started doing things more natural and more um, more I don't know the word. Uh, I would say more uh, comfortable to me. Yeah. And um, I think that's just the approach that you have to take with anything. Uh, there's going to be challenges. There gonna, there's going to be obstacles. There's going to be things that you go through that sometimes it's going to be very difficult. It's going to be very hard for you to see the light, very hard for you to see the positives. But you just got to stay strong mentally and just continue to fight and continue to fight. And um, just never give up. Always have faith. Um, and be very perseverant in those in those moments and if you're that and you and you stay that way then eventually I know it's going to be tough I know it's going to be hard but eventually you're going to get through and uh, you just always got to believe that and, and continue to fight every single day and if you do that you can get through anything in life and um, that's kind of how I took that approach on the basketball court and I took that approach from the court to my OCD and uh, it's kind of what's helped me grow and get to where I am today where My OCD is under control, and, and I'm playing basketball at a very high level. So um, I would say 
to anybody else that's going through it, to anybody else that's struggling with anything. It doesn't have to be OCD. It could be anxiety. It could be a lot of different things. Just continue to fight. Stay strong. Stay positive. And um, always believe that there is light at the end of the tunnel. Always believe that there is a way. Always believe that there's a chance to get through it. And uh, just fight. Just be a fighter and never give in and, and you'll get through it. That's can be our last message. Thank you very much, Shane Naki, for no this uh, for your time, for this interview, and your, your nice messages. Thank you very much, and good luck in the season. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Andrew Efes Medya Günü'nde Shane Naki'ne beraber birçok konuyu konuştuk. Şimdilik röportajınız kadar. Hoşçakalın.